Hi folks, it's Florida Man here. I'll be your Emily Post for today because I've decided to make a video about the etiquette, ethics, and ethos of diplomacy. To begin with, let's unpack what those three words generally mean. Etiquette is the customary code of behavior, polite behavior, among members of a group. Ethics are the principles that govern a person's behavior or the conducting of an activity. Ethos is the character, spirit, or moral code of a thing. Etiquette is sort of a loose set of standards of behavior that are generally accepted among members of a group. For that reason, etiquette can be controversial, because what's generally accepted is frequently a matter of some debate. Here are some examples of etiquette in diplomacy. Online, it's somewhat rude to pressure people toward finalizing orders. Diplomacy is a game that requires time to be played thoughtfully. And if it's not in person, there really isn't a good reason to put pressure on a person to finalize. Although, a lot of people have done this. By all means, of course, it's fine to remind people to enter orders, but it's pretty annoying when people start arguing in the public press that you should have finalized already. Just because they're done negotiating doesn't mean you are. Also online, if people need a processing exception in a game, or in other words, they know they won't be available to play for a couple days for personal reasons, it's good etiquette to generally just approve the processing exceptions, regardless of the state of the game generally, because otherwise you'd essentially be gaining an advantage because of their real-world events happening, preventing them from paying attention to the game. A controversial matter in terms of online diplomacy etiquette is message forwarding. Some people find message forwarding incredibly rude and automatically consider players untrustworthy for doing so, even if they're just forwarding to that person a message from someone else, and accurately doing so. However, I don't think this behavior is generally condemned. There's a lot of controversy either way about it. Full disclosure, I myself will occasionally forward messages, although I don't make it a habit. Going briefly to in-person diplomacy, most players don't like gratuitous yelling and swearing in the game. It's a matter of taste, to some degree, and I myself have been guilty of raising my voice a little at a diplomacy table, in a particularly tense moment. But if you make a habit of this, I'd say it's likely people will stop inviting you to house games. And that's really what etiquette is about. Etiquette is not about what's enforceable, it's about what makes people feel like you're not as good of a sport. The ethics of diplomacy are different from etiquette, because this goes from being a social expectation toward being genuinely enforceable rules. Here are some behaviors that implicate ethics. Multi-accounting. This kind of speaks for itself. When people form multiple accounts on a diplomacy website so they can play multiple powers in a game in order to have a better chance of winning, that's just literally cheating. It's a type of cheating that wouldn't even be possible in the in-person version of the game. And that is obviously against the rules, against the enforceable rules can get you banned from websites. And it should. Another form of bad behavior is having an alliance with another player agreed on before a game starts. This is the very worst and least ethical form of metagaming. It crosses the line from being socially frowned upon to actually being against the rules of the game, at least as most players understand them. This actually goes against the written rules of play diplomacy, although some sites don't make clear what their stance is. A less bad but still unethical behavior is dragging out a game for many years beyond when a stalemate line has been formed against you and is being defended successfully. It's okay for a power or alliance to test a stalemate line for a little while to see if the opposing alliance might break down and stab each other under pressure or persuasion. The unfortunate thing is when it becomes clear that the power pursuing solo is just waiting and hoping for the defending alliance to miss entering orders, which is something that will eventually happen to everybody. Again, this is actually against the written rules of play diplomacy. On that site, if someone does this and there's been no progress on either side for several years, you can get a moderator to declare a draw. Another ethically dubious thing is sharing a screenshot of someone else's communications. Frankly, I think this is just unethical, not the ambiguous way I've just described it of ethically dubious. 
It goes against the site rules on play diplomacy, and the difference between this and message forwarding is pretty profound. It's pretty hard to fake a screenshot, unless you are a proficient user of Photoshop or something. It's not something I could or would do. I think this is also why a lot of diplomacy websites actually don't allow you to send images through messages. In effect, the people who would send screenshots of messages are ruining the image sending option for everyone. One thing that some people might consider unethical, which I do not think is really unethical, is flirting with other players. I'm not into that tactic, and frankly I don't think it would work on me in a million years, but I think any form of persuasion that doesn't cross legal or rule-based boundaries based on the game's internal logic is sort of acceptable. There are occasionally things that sort of defy the rules that are not generally considered unethical as well. The Flying Dutchman is a phenomenon where a player sneaks an extra unit onto the board when other players are not paying attention. This is obviously only possible in in-person diplomacy. If you do this, you can issue orders to that unit, and as long as no one calls you out on it, the orders will be executed as if that unit was legitimately there. If you do get called out on it though, you will have to remove the unit. Going to Ethos. This is the spirit of the game. As mentioned before, what the general player thinks is right and wrong about how you play the game. The Soloist Manifesto by David E. Cohen is a pretty good encapsulation of what I would say is the dominant ethos of diplomacy, although it also incorporates some individual quirks of Cohen's particular intensity. The objective of the game is soloing. Other than playing fair and enjoying a good game, everything else is second after soloing. I think most of the players who take the game more than casually, and play it regularly, understand that soloing is the real purpose. You can have a good game where you don't solo, but Cohen would say it's a failure. Again, I'm not sure I would say it with Cohen's level of intensity, but I basically agree with him here. I just tend to use softer language. One group of players who disagrees with Cohen are Care Bears, which means people who stick by their allies to the end and don't break their promises to their allies. There are very few real Care Bears in the games I play but as far as I'm concerned, they're basically a plague on the hobby. Care Bears are people who do not understand the spirit of the game, or who are willing to actively go against it. You're not supposed to set out early on in the game looking to draw with your ally. That's almost as bad as having a person you arrange to ally with before the game, and then just working with them the whole time. Make a plan to win the game. If you're unsuccessful in winning the game, you can settle for a draw. Doing it in reverse, where you search for a person to try to draw with, is poor play in my opinion. I understand that a Care Bear could theoretically be a good player, but I should add on to this that I don't believe I've encountered that person. If you have the wrong way of thinking about something, it's hard for you to coincidentally also be good at doing that thing. Related to that, I think the concept of a draw being a shared win rather than a draw sort of goes against the spirit of the game too, although there are players I respect who will use that phrasing and way of thinking about it and it is distinct from care-bearing. A game of diplomacy is won when a player gets to 18 centers. That's it. Anything else is suboptimal and is not a win, although it's entirely possible that many players can lose in a game where no one actually wins, and a couple of players can draw. Contrary to certain satirical videos you may have seen, as well as the protests of people trying to sucker you in various games you've probably participated in, diplomacy is not actually a game about going hand-in-hand -hand with an ally or two to the very end, being honest with them, and straightforward, and loyal. That makes for a fairly boring game, actually. Diplomacy is a game of treachery and deception, for better and for worse. That's not a bug in the game, it's a feature. For many of us who are honest, kind, and loyal in our daily lives, the treachery in diplomacy is actually part of the point. I hope I've given you some food for thought, listener. Please give voice to your opinions in the comments below, if I have. Who am I kidding, though? I'm sure a lot of you will have already started disagreeing with something I said before the video was even finished. I hope people really enjoy this. If you do, I'm sure I haven't covered everything about the etiquette, ethics, and ethos of diplomacy, so perhaps this video will have a sequel. We'll have to see. I hope you liked this video. If you did, you too can participate in helping me make and promote great diplomacy content, either by joining my supporters on Patreon or by writing subtitles for the videos in other languages in addition to liking, subscribing, and commenting, all of which helps this channel grow. Follow the links in the video description or comment below for more. And I would like to briefly thank the people who are already helping me out via the methods I've mentioned, whose names and screen names are on the screen now. Let's keep going and make this the biggest diplomacy community out there. 
let's try and hit 1,000 subscribers by the end of this year. Until next time, Florida Man, out.